In this video, I'm going to teach you 10 must know tips in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Rico Richardson. I upload weekly videos on DaVinci and Darktable. So if that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing. Now, let me tell you what those are. You're the one I trust. Tip number one. In DaVinci Resolve, you can open multiple timelines at once. This allows you to switch between projects and copy and paste certain parts or clips from one project to another. In order for you to be able to switch between projects, you'll need to open up the project manager window. Here you can find previous and current projects. To activate the ability to switch between projects, you need to click the right mouse button and select the option dynamic project switching. With this option checked, you can now switch between projects. Please open up the project that you want to access and then you'll be able to switch from that project to your current one. It will take a minute to load your project, but once that is finished, you will have a bar in the middle of the screen, which you can use to switch between projects. Tip number two. When you've opened up a project, it is now time to create a timeline. There are three ways in which you can do this. First, Use the top menu, go to File, New, and then click Timeline. The second way is to place your mouse over one of your clips and then click the right mouse button. The option Create New Timeline from Clip will now be available. When you select this option, a new timeline will be created using the settings of the clip. So if you have a 25 frames per second clip, you will have a 25 frames per second timeline. The third way is to drag and drop your video clip onto the timeline. This will automatically create a timeline. The name of the timeline can be changed by clicking the timeline in the media pool and select the change name option. Tip number three. When you start in DaVinci Resolve, it comes with two tracks. The first one is the video track and the track beneath it is your audio track. Both are marked one. You can add extra tracks. Let's say you have a second camera angle and want a text overlay or want to use an adjustment clip and want to store them on your video track number two. Or maybe you want to add some sound effects to your video and you need an extra audio track. When you place your mouse on the video track and select the right mouse button, you have the option to add a track or to add a video and audio track. It really is as easy as that. Tip number four. Syncing audio in DaVinci can be done in multiple ways. The first way is to look at the audio tracks on your timeline and then match them accordingly. This process can take up a lot of time and it requires a perfect timing. DaVinci Resolve allows you to do this automatically as well. The first way is to go into the cut page, select the two clips and click the sync button. This will bring you in the sync bin. From here, you have the ability to sync your clips using several techniques. The one I use the most is wavelength or audio. This will synchronize the clips by matching its audio. After you're done and satisfied, you can select save sync and the clips and audio now have been synced. Tip number five. Tip number five falls together with tip number four. Because creating a multicam sequence can be done by selecting the two clips that you want to create a multicam sequence of, clicking your right mouse button and select create new multicam clip using selected clips. The clips can be synchronized in various ways. One of them and the one I use the most is sync by sound. This will synchronize the clips and create the multicam sequence. This sequence is now ready to be dropped onto the timeline and to work on. To access both camera angles, make sure you click this button in the left window and select Multicam. Here you can see all the camera angles. It also allows you to change the way the clips are cut. One of them is video only, the other one is video and audio, and another one is audio only. So whatever you need, you can pick. Tip number six. This tip is about adjustment clips. One of the most versatile ways to work on your video. The adjustment clips go on top of your original clips and allow you to add effects, color grading or other stuff. The great thing about adjustment clips is that they can be stored in your power bins by dragging and dropping them there. Which allows you to use the same adjustment layer and settings in a new project or on a new file. When you learn how to use these, it will speed up your workflow tremendously. Tip number 7. Render in place. 
Let's say you have a clip which doesn't play back smoothly for whatever reason. Drone clips, for example, are notoriously hard on your system. DaVinci now allows you to render clips in place. All you need to do is click your right mouse button on the clip and select Render in Place. You will be prompted by a menu giving you the option to change its format, codec, type and it even allows you to keep handles at the beginning and the end and to include the video effects you've added to the clip. Select Render and then store it in the desired folder. If for whatever reason you still need to change something to the original clip, you can click the right mouse button again and select Decompose to Original. Tip number 8. Viewing in Cinema Mode. When you go to Workspace, Viewer Mode and select Cinema Viewer, you get a full screen preview of what you're editing. You can also access this feature by pressing P on your keyboard. Tip number 9. Keyboard shortcuts can come in handy when you want to speed up your workflow. When you first install DaVinci Resolve, it asks you what kind of layout you're used to and want to use. For instance, Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. You can find your shortcuts by going to DaVinci Resolve and then selecting Keyboard Customization. This will show you a pop-up screen with the keyboard. If you press one of the keys on the layout, it will show you which effect is being applied to which letter. For instance, if I select the Z, it says that it's connected to the blade edit mode. Changing it is easy. Simply click on either all commands or one of the options below that, find the desired option, click that one and then press the letter on your keyboard. When you're done, select save and it will be saved. If you press the three dots in the upper right, you can also save your customization as a preset and or export it so that others can take use of it by importing it in their version of DaVinci Resolve. Tip number 10. Autosave in my opinion is a straight must. This can be activated by going to DaVinci Resolve and then selecting preferences. Under user you will find project save and load tab. Select that one and you have the option to live save, activate project backups with the desired interval and this has saved me quite some time when DaVinci Resolve crashed. I highly recommend everyone using this feature. The project backup location can be customized as well. And that's it. I hope you like it. I hope it really helps you start using DaVinci Resolve because it's an amazing program. If you've got questions, just leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try to respond to them as soon as possible. And for this week, I guess that's it. So if you want to see more of me, please click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button down there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!